have called today's session Power Up. Power Up, okay? And it's nothing to do with Power Rangers. Nothing to do with Power Rangers. But I'm just going to start. How many of y'all love cars? Okay, 50% of y'all. Love cars? Love cars? Okay, Yakang, let's flash that picture. This is oh. <laughs> okay, trivia, okay. This is the most powerful car engine in the world. Most powerful. How many of you want to take a guess what car it is? I, I mean, not... Okay, okay, we all know it's a Bugatti because it says there, okay? What model of Bugatti is this? Right. Hey, okay, okay. You, you need some uh, reward right there. Okay, anyway. This is called a Bugatti Chiron. Bugatti Chiron. Now, I'm just going to be a bit techy and nerdy for a while. This car has four turbos. Now, I'm, in a while, I'm going to compare it to a MyV, okay, which all of us are familiar with. But this car has four turbos, okay? My car does not even have one turbo. Okay, this car has four, four turbos. It has an 8.0 litre W16 engine. Have you heard of a... You all, some of you have heard of a V8, right? V6. This is a W16. Which means the pistons... How many of you all have seen a ship? Right? Have you, seen a, have you seen the engine of a ship? Have you seen like it, it goes like that? It basically has the, like, yeah, yeah, like, like Isaac's dancing right now. This car basically has like the capability of like a ship. Okay? W16. Now, it produces 1,500 horsepower. Now, so, so, I, if I was speaking in an engineering class, everyone would be, <gasps> wow. But obviously, you're not engineers. <laughs> okay, so for those of you who are not car geeks, we're going to compare this to a MyV, okay? I mean, I think some of us here drive MyVs or maybe used to drive MyVs. Now, the latest MyV, the latest MyV, the one that William West, oh, William's not here. The one that William Gordon's, uh, Gordon and Olivia's brother owns, the latest MyV, right, has 100 horsepower. Oh. This one, yo, wow. Oh, yo. Thank God. We have patriotic Malaysians. By the way, my V is not Malaysian. Huh? It's 52% Japanese. Okay? Okay, anyway. So the my V, the latest my V, has 100 horsepower. So what I'm trying to tell you guys is, this Bugatti Chiron, right, has like 15 my V engines in it. 15 my V engines. And by the way, it costs 3 million US dollars. This car costs 3 million US dollars. Okay, now let's, let's come back to... I, I, I'm, I'm going somewhere, okay? I'm painting a picture. So let's say you guys, all of you, each... I think there are more than 50 of you guys here, right? There's only 50 of these cars in the world, by the way. Yeah. The latest one, latest one. So there are definitely more than 50 of you guys here. Let's say all of you own one Bugatti Chiron. <laughs> so when you own a car, you have the key, right? Right? So you guys all own this car, but you're scared to start the engine. How many of y'all say what? I heard some what. Now, now, yeah, that was my reaction as well. Like, what? Like, I have the key to this car, which only 50 people in this world have, right? But I don't dare start the engine. Some of you are thinking, like, this is such a ridiculous story. Now, this might sound ridiculous. Get ready for the ouch moment. But this is basically how Christians live their lives. We are connected to a reservoir of limitless power, a.k.a. God. And because God sent Jesus to die on the cross, Jesus overcame death and the grave and sin and the power of sin, right? 
And we as His children have accepted Jesus into our lives, accepted that power into our lives, we have the key. But a lot of us haven't started that engine. Yeah, I think I can close now already. <laughs> How many of you know that God has limitless power? Hands up. How many of you know that God has limitless power? I mean, if you don't know that God has limit, uh, uh, limitless power, just look at what happened at camp, right? And that was just three nights, four days. God has limitless power. Now, second question. How many of you have personally, personally experienced that power of God? Wow, okay. I expected lesser hands, but that's great. Wonderful. My thoughts today are basically going to be addressing what I just shared. The fact that we don't tap into the power, even though we have access to the limitless power. We do. Because power unrecognized or power unutilized is useless. Okay, I'm going to give you another example. You know, we drive around KL roads a lot. I, I often kind of see, you know, we stay in like the Sagambot part of Mon Kera. Mon Kera people are pretty rich. I've seen like what? Three Lambos already in just like the two months thing there. Three Lamborghinis. And often I look at Vic and like, actually why do people drive Lamborghini here? Like, go a bit, then must break. Hum. Mm. <laughs> then go, go, go a bit, go a bit. By the way, Sagambot and Kapong roads are terrible, full of holes, right? <laughs> So like, drive Lamborghini, break, break, break. Go, go, go over the bum, go over the bum. And then like, you know, Malaysian uh, malls, right? The so steep, cannot drive Lamborghini. Oh. Must bring out my MyV. Because the Lamborghini too low. Like, why? When I was thinking about this point, I was thinking like, why do people buy sports cars in Malaysia? Because power unrecognized or unutilized is useless. Like you see Lamborghini, you go meet Valley, make a mall, can't talk already, cannot use really. Right? Yeah, fuck Valley lah. All right, but that's why we've titled today's session Power Up. We all know your, our church team this year, right? Empowered. I decided to be a bit more catchy, hipster, and like, Power Up, Power Rangers, Power Puff Girls, <laughs> Mojo Jojo. <laughs> okay, let's come back. Many of you, if not all of you that were at youth camp, experienced a fresh touch from God, right? Come on, if you experience a fresh touch of God, just give Him a shout right now, right? <laughs> experience a fresh touch of God, experience the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, as Andrew and Chelsea shared at the Christmas weekend, out of this world Christmas, I'm here to tell you that you don't have to wait for another three nights, four days, stay at some hotel away from KL to experience the power of God. You can experience the power of God daily. And right, I'm going to come back to this at the end, but the key to the power of God is in your hands. But God won't make you start the engine. He can't, I'm not going to say He can't, but He won't because we have a responsibility on our part to play. If God just makes us do what He does, he wants us to do, then we are not human beings, we are robots, okay? So God won't force us to do something we are not wanting to do. So the key is in your hands. Will you start your engine? Okay, so that's just my introduction, okay? I have nine pages of notes. We're going to look a lot, we're going to look a lot at the Bible. This is an introduction to the year, a kickoff, sort of like a vision cast for the year. So I'm going to spend a bit more time looking at the Bible and I hope you all will take notes and also hear what God is saying to you. Now, let's just go back to basics, okay? Laying a foundation. Go back to basics. Can you just drop the volume of my mic a little bit? Uh? Just a little bit. Testing, one, two, testing. Yeah, okay, cool. Let me just ask you a very basic question. What is the Christian life? What does it mean to be Christian? I don't think there's a more basic question than this, but other than how, are, how were you created? But anyway, what is the Christian life? So the Christian life in summary basically is receiving Christ 
the Lord, first part, and it doesn't stop there, doesn't stop there, really doesn't stop there. After that, it's walking in Christ, receiving Christ the Lord, and then walking in Christ. Now the question is, and then we're going to dive into today's thoughts. The question is, where does the Holy Spirit fit into this? You all believe the Holy Spirit fits into the Christian life, right? And I just said the Christian life is receiving Jesus as Lord, right? And then walking in Christ. Now the Holy Spirit has to fit into these two things I mentioned. I'm going to share with you a bit of that right now before I share with you some implications of it. Before we go there, who is the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? Now, those of you who had twins last year, Uncle Chow and Auntie Jess were here, right here in this room, and they talked about who the Holy Spirit is. Who can answer that? Who is the Holy Spirit? By the way, I'm sharing all this, right? In main service this year, you're going to hear a lot of sermons on Empowered. So I'm hoping like, with this knowledge and with this understanding, you'll be, ah, oh, Mike said that. <laughs> right? And then, like, oh, okay, yeah, this makes sense. Yeah, and then you can link what the pastors are saying together. All right? Who's the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? Come on, let's start shooting. Yes, the Holy Spirit is God. Come on, let's keep going. The Holy Spirit is Jesus. No, no, no. Holy Spirit is not Jesus. Holy Spirit is third person in Trinity. Some more. Comforter, advocate. Some more. Help. Okay, now you're just giving like... like. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Who is the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit? Person that lives in you. Great. Some more. Okay, like, actually you all did pretty well. Like. Give, your, give, give yourself a clap. Like. Okay. Holy Spirit is third person in the Trinity. Now, Jesus... We're going to look into it in a bit. Acts 1, Jesus ascended to heaven, right? Like he physically left earth. Okay? That's why it was written. The disciples saw it happen. He left earth, right? But Jesus is now with us. We don't see him in bodily form, but he is with us. He is only with us by his spirit. And it's, it's crazy, guys, because God created us body, soul, mind, and You know, um, what's that song? Great Are You, Lord. Help me with the chorus. So we? we pour, it's, it's how God has designed us. That the innermost part of our beings were created to respond to God. And the person that wrote that, I can't remember what's his name. It's, our breath, it's, it's his breath in our lungs responding to him. The same way God created a spirit, right? It's that spirit He created in us that can respond to His spirit, big S. Amazing, right? Creator God, powerful God. So, Jesus ascended to heaven, but He's with us now by His spirit. Thirdly, because of that, God can dwell in us personally. Personally, each one of you has the Holy Spirit. doesn't mean like... So, so what does that mean, right? My prayer is not more powerful than your prayer. You have the Holy Spirit. And... The Holy Spirit dwells among us, no pun intended. The game used to be very, very popular. I just was looking at a snapshot last time we had. I can't believe we played Among Us together at CYF. Anyway, yeah, when, when we were on Zoom, CY online. Remember that? We played Among Us. And then after that, it was a devotion that God is among us. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yes. But guys, the Holy Spirit is among us, not an imposter, but the Holy Spirit is among us as a church. Matthew 16, 18, when two or three are gathered, here I am in your midst. Now, when Jesus said that, He knew He was going to promise the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is with us right now. More than two people gathered, right? Holy Spirit is with us right now. Number three, uh, number four, the Spirit mediates God's presence to us. The only reason you felt God's presence at youth camp was because the Holy Spirit was there. Remember what I shared last year? First CYF of last year, I shared on home. You remember that? The compartments of our hearts. And there are certain areas that the Holy Spirit can't dwell. That is why we also need to be very careful when we come into church. Many of us come to church like this. 
Many of us in the beginning of service, speak, speakers preaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, got tuition tonight, ah? Guys, Holy Spirit is here. Lastly, the Spirit only points attention to Jesus. Later, I'm going to be talking a bit about signs and wonders. Holy Spirit only points attention to Jesus. I'm only done with two pages of notes. Okay, let's move. So that's who the Holy Spirit is. Now, we tend not to talk about the Holy Spirit. I'm going to be serious about this. In fact, scholars have written about this. There are papers written about this. Christians talk a lot about God the Father and God the Son, but often very little about the Holy Spirit. God the Father loves you. Jesus died for you. So on and so forth, right? Familiar? But we seldom talk about the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is often quietly at work behind the scenes. What's Genesis 1 verse 1? In the beginning. In the beginning, who? God created the heavens and the earth. Now, we all know God is three in one, right? What's verse 2? No, now the earth was formless. And then the Spirit of God hovered over the earth. Now, watch the not lyrics, pull up. Watch the verse properly, okay? Now the earth was formless, which means nothing in being, right? And the Spirit hovered over, which means the Spirit was involved in creation. But it's not the center focus. Do you realize that? It's not a center focus. In the beginning, God. And then only like a couple of sentences later. Do you, do you see that? That's why in our minds, actually seldom, the Holy Spirit is rarely at the, at the front of attention. But guys, don't be mistaken. It doesn't mean that if something is quietly at work, it has no power. You know how an earthquake forms? How an earthquake happens? Okay, okay let's not talk about earthquake. You know how tsunami happens? Right? Basically, far, far away when the tsunami happened in Malaysia, far, far away out at sea, this was near Indonesia, Bandung or whatever, I think it was Bandung. The tectonic plates, which were the, the foundation of the ground under the sea, shifted, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, anyway, no one to correct me, there's no geologist here. Uh, but the tectonic plates under the sea shifted by a few centimeters, shifted. Few centimeters. What happened in Penang? Gurney Drive is not even recognizable after the tsunami. So don't be mistaken, something quietly at work. Did any of y'all know the tectonic place was shifting? No. You knew? Oh, you knew? Cool. Yeah. I don't, I don't think any of y'all knew. Unless God spoke to y'all on a vision. But look at the impact it produced. And then the whole knew that Malaysia was hit with a tsunami. So don't be mistaken, does not mean something is quietly working behind the scenes? It has no impact. Three main points, okay, and then I'll bring this to a close. What the Holy Spirit uh, does in our lives. The power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Number one, those of you are taking notes, number one, the Holy Spirit works in us to receive Christ Jesus the Lord. Now, all of us here, I believe, heard the gospel and believed, right? We believe Jesus died for our sins, Jesus rose again, and we have trusted Jesus to save us as our risen Lord, right? Now, we could not have made the decision for ourselves unless the Spirit of God was working in us. Now, I'm not making this up. Okay, the Bible says it. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 3. It will be on the screen, but I suggest you flip to your own Bibles, let me bring up a statistic. I have learned that if you read from a screen, also your phone screen, but I know many of y'all don't have physical Bibles these days, but if, okay, here's a statistic, okay? If you read from a device that is not yours, your mental retainment drops by 30%. So even at school, at school, if you are just referring to your lecturer's slides on the screen and not your own device, your mental retainment drops by 30%. I'm not making this up. A psychologist came up with it. Now, worst statistic. 
let's say you're using a physical Bible and a digital Bible, your physical Bible has 50% more mental retainment than a digital Bible. Now, if you want to mentally absorb the Bible, please buy a physical Bible. I, I think it's such a worthy investment, right? If you want to retain the Word of God, right? Yeah, everyone's nodding. Okay, go buy a Bible after this. All right, if you only need a discount, please tell me. I can get 20% off at Canaan Land. Just, just tell me, all right? But please, please, please get a physical Bible. So now, the, the, the thing on the screen is for people among us who are new, maybe forgot to bring your Bible, but those of you who have your Bibles, please look at least at least 30% plus, right? Retainment, okay? So don't look at me. Look at your screens, okay? All right, okay. First Corinthians 12, verse 3. Paul says, for I want you to understand. By the way, now I've resorted to a new method. I've printed paper. I don't use iPad anymore. Like I actually typed it out and printed because of that statistic. I'm reading from a printed paper. Okay, anyway. <laughs> okay. First Corinthians 12 verse 3. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God ever says Jesus is a curse. And look what Paul says. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God worked in us to receive Christ Jesus the Lord. Now, we need God's Spirit to come into us to receive new life. Okay, because only the Spirit of God can give us spiritual life. John 3, 3, and 5. Now it's, you know last time, right? I teach in youth, you can hear the Bible. Now it's so strange. Anyway, oh Lord. <laughs> John 3, 3, and 5. Okay, la, I made a paper sound. La. Then at least I feel a bit. John 3, 3, and 5. This was Nicodemus having a chat with Jesus, and Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one, one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then Jesus goes in verse 5, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Do you see how the Holy Spirit is instrumental in being born again? What? What, what Jesus meant by born again is not dying and like new individual, no. He meant a second birth. A second birth, almost like a revival. A revival and we need the Spirit of God to revive us spiritually. So the Spirit of God worked in us to receive Christ Jesus the Lord. Number two. Uh, yeah, number one is very short. Number two and number three is very long. I'm just preempting you. Secondly, the Holy Spirit empowers us or powers us up to walk in Christ. Remember what I said? That's not what the Christian life is. Christian life is receiving Christ Jesus a lot and then walking in Christ, right? So the Holy Spirit was instrumental in us coming to receive Jesus Christ as Lord. Secondly, now the Holy Spirit empowers us to walk in Christ. I'm going to spend more time here because I think we are all now in this situation. Just now, all of us said we experienced the power of God at camp. Now, youth camp is in another, what, 300 days. I just whacked, anyway. December 11, okay? That's when youth camp is, this year. Yeah. Yeah, probably 300 days. Actually, let, more than 300 days. Uh, the fact is, you don't have to wait for youth camp to experience the power of God. I'm going to share with you right now, because the Holy Spirit now empowers us to walk in Christ. Now, three points, three sub points under this point, okay? Firstly, how the Holy Spirit does that empowers us to walk in Christ. Firstly, the Holy Spirit leads us to kill sin in our lives. Holy Spirit leads us to kill sin in our lives. Now, God is at work within us, and God's work within us is primarily to change us to become more like Him. Okay? And the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, leads that change. Romans 8, 13 to 14. Why I'm pausing is because I'm hoping that y'all will actually flip to your Bibles and retain 30% more. 
Okay, Romans 8, 13 to 14. Cool. Romans 8, 13 to 14. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. What does Paul say? If by the Spirit, not by your own strength, not by a seminar, not by an, your own intellect or wisdom, but if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. And then he goes on to say, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Now I'm going to expand on that. I'm not me, but Paul is going to expand on that. The Spirit spearheads that change by leading us to kill sinner. Let's look at Galatians 5.17. Galatians 5.17. Paul expands what he said in Romans. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit. Basically, your own desires. We all live in the flesh. None of you are born of a virgin birth, right? Everyone got mommy, daddy, right? Okay. Means you have seen, okay? You live in the flesh, right? Okay, so the des desires of the flesh are against the spirit. And the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. How many of you think it is not natural for us to pray? Ooh, wow. I think it's not natural for us to pray. I, in fact, we just were listening to a podcast in the car a few days ago. The, the author who is a theologian said, it is not natural for us, to any human being, to pray. And I think it's because of this verse. Because the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. Continue. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. Do you realize you, you feel that sometimes? Like you set out to do something, but you end up not doing it. And then you set out to not do something, but you end up doing it. Paul actually talked about that in Romans 6. The good that you want to do, you don't do. The bad that you don't want to do, you do. It's, you do that because the desires of your flesh are contrary or opposed to the Spirit. And then Paul goes on to this long list of stuff that the flesh desires, right? You can see that in your Bibles. And then verse 24. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So we need to keep in step with the Holy Spirit in making that decision a daily decision. Every day when you wake up, crucify the flesh. All of us have sinned, okay? All of us have sinned. Different sins, different things we struggle with. But we should crucify the flesh and it's a daily struggle. Daily struggle. So the Holy Spirit firstly leads us to kill sin in our lives. Number two, the Holy Spirit speaks God's word in an ongoing way. Notice I said daily. Uh. Again, I keep using youth camp because youth camp is that, that big event we have in the year, right? Don't wait for youth camp to confess your sin. Don't wait for youth camp to, oh my God, feel emo, start crying, go to the room with the leader, prayer room. It's a, there's a place for that. There's a place for that. But you don't need to wait for youth camp for that to happen. Andrew's here. Mark is here. Vic is here. Lydia is here. Chelsea is here. If you need to talk to a leader about something you're struggling with, talk after this. We have rooms here. We have mamaks nearby. Notice I'm going to repeat the word daily a lot. The Holy Spirit leads us to kill sin in our lives daily. Not at Kampa. Daily. Okay? Number two. Holy Spirit speaks God's word in an ongoing way. God doesn't just speak at church, guys. God doesn't just speak when you're listening to a sermon on YouTube. God doesn't just speak when you're listening to Spotify. Because the Holy Spirit is in us and with us, God speaks to us in an ongoing way. Now watch this, very, very interesting. 2 Timothy 3.16. 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is breathed out of God and profitable for teaching, for 
reproof, for correction and for training in righteousness, that the man of God or the woman of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Now, I did a word study. The Greek word for the word spirit, right? Is, oh, sorry, for the word spirit. Pula. The Greek word for the word breathe or breath. How many of you all know the Greek word for the word breath? Isaac, shush. Isaac and I have a lot of these funny theological discussions. How many of you all know the Greek word for the... Like, anyone can, can... It almost sounds like you're breathing anyway. That's, a, that's what my lecturer told me. The, the Greek word for the word breath is the word ruah. Now, you can't say ruah without... Right? That's how, that's how we learned it. It's the Greek word for the word spirit, uh, breath is ruah. And the synonym for the word ruah is spirit. All scripture is spirited by God. Now, that changes things, right? And is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction. That the man of God may be complete. Now, this is also this is more crazy. I hope you all get it. I took a while comprehending this. I'm going to try and share it. I want you to watch the language. This one, you all need your Bibles, okay? Uh, it's not on the screen. Watch the language in the, how the writer of Hebrews quotes Psalm 95, okay? In, he, the writer of Hebrews quotes Psalm 95 in Hebrews 3 and 4, okay? So flip your Bibles now, your phones or whatever, to Hebrews 3 verse 7. Hebrews 3 verse 7. This is not on the screen. I didn't want to put it on the screen because it's going to be very hard to illustrate it on the screen. What does Hebrews 3 verse 7 say? Ah, uh, what? As the? As the Holy Spirit says, right? Okay. And then the, the writer quotes Psalm 95. Now, jump to Hebrews 4 verse 7. Just one chapter later, the writer quotes Psalm 95 again, right? And what does the writer say? Read out, read out. Keep going, keep going. Saying through? Is David the Holy Spirit? Different, right? Now, now this study, I did some study. The time between when Hebrews was written, we don't know who wrote Hebrews. Some guesses is Paul, some guesses is Philemon and different other people. The, the date when Hebrews was written, the time elapsed between David's time. Now, I, I just read the Bible, right? Uh, spoken to David, that was probably a long time ago. And then spoken to the Holy Spirit. The, the time, right, is 1,100 years. 1,100 years. Okay? I probably we, none of us know what happened 1,100 years ago. But I hope you are getting what I'm trying to say. The same thing was spoken. And it's because of the Holy Spirit. It's because of what 2 Timothy 3.16 says. All scripture is spirited by God. No end. That's why in another part of the Bible says, heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will, will not or will remain. It's because the everlasting spirit of God can speak God's word to you in an ongoing way. You, trust me, guys, you don't... Most of the stuff, right, that I've personally heard from God and acted upon didn't come from a sermon. You're like, Huh? Really? I like to play with my ring, play my pen, right? A lot of times, it came on the toilet bowl. I, I'm just being vulnerable, guys. It came on the toilet bowl. It came and I was just dreaming, daydreaming, playing. Thought came. Because the Holy Spirit speaks and He's constantly speaking. And the Holy Spirit still speaks through the Word of God. Now, guys, reading, hearing, Believing and obeying the word of God is a profoundly spiritual experience. Guys, many young people, in fact, a book was recently written about a church which I don't want to name. Many young people have intellectualized these four things and left it as intellect. I purposely put this here because reading, hearing, believing and obeying the word of God is a purely and profoundly spiritual experience. That's why in Bible study techniques, although there are many techniques and practical things to follow, every author will say, before you read your Bible, pray. Because 
what goes from your brain to your heart, only the Holy Spirit can do or can push. A lot of times, Bible knowledge just remains here. Amazing. Remains here. And it doesn't go here. And because it doesn't go here, it doesn't go here. Thirdly, third sub-point of point number two. The Holy Spirit assures us of God's love. Romans 5, 5 to 6. I remember I joked with Vic. She was, we were dating and then she was in the car singing some, she can remember some Justin Bieber song, front to end, and I was like, babe, what's Romans 5? <laughs> <laughs> Romans 5, 5 to 6. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Right? And then verse 8, But God shows His love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Guys, the Holy Spirit enables us to believe, appreciate and respond to God's love. And when you can fully grasp God's love, the reality of God's love, right? That's what keeps you enduring through suffering. That's what helps you build character through suffering. The people who, I mean, okay, I, I got to admit this. It's actually very easy to complain in suffering. Very easy. But the people who are able to withstand suffering, right, have a profound experience with God's love. The persecuted church that we recently gave to, the fact they can go on day by day, just going through those difficult motions, potentially being, a, being killed at any point of any day, is because they have a crazy, immense understanding of God's love. And it's not, they are not able to quote the 200 times God's love is quoted in the Bible. That's not what keeps them going. God's love has gone from here to here, and hence... Here. And only the Holy Spirit can do that. Are you needing God's love? I think many of us have. We are quite we are kind of like Tida Appa attitude. I mean the, the Gen Z, I'm sorry, I'm gonna get bullets for this, but Gen Z is known as the entitled generation. I will go to CYF. What's in it for me? Oi, that's not a place to shout woo. <laughs> really? Go to movie or so? Ah, let's watch the trailer first. Entitled generation. Go to Chinese Yogi. Go Ampao or not? I'm going to say this. I saw some young people post their QR code on Instagram. I'm not going to say who it is. The millennials talked about you. They post their touch and go QR code on their story, hoping a married guy, I purposely did not see it, would see it and transfer money to you. 20 years ago, Andrew and I were work in Starbucks to earn Six ringgit an hour, you know, 450 an hour. Now you post your QR code on social media hoping people, oh my goodness gracious. What an entitled generation. Anyway, that's the generation we deal with. But the fact is, because of entitlement, whew, the love of God has flown out. You, you, you forget the awareness, right? Because you're always thinking about yourself. I'm not just talking about you okay? It's also us. We are exposed to the culture. Because we're so exposed to what's in it for me, we have forgotten what's in it for them. But God's love, if you realize, was never about me. It's always about them. If God was selfish, He wouldn't have sent Jesus. None of us would exist today. But because of God's love, because God saw that a human race was going to be annihilated if I didn't do anything for them. You all get my point, right? It 
That's why the Holy Spirit needs to pour out God's love into our hearts. Okay, last point. I'm going to close. This is very much tied to youth camp. The Holy Spirit empowers us to represent Christ. Wow, just now the Ampa one, you say the woo so loud. Holy Spirit empowers us to be witnesses of God's power, to represent Christ where we're at. And we're going to land on our church team verse, which is Acts 1 verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Let me just give you a bit of background. The disciples, before this happened, the disciples spent three years with Jesus. Three years. And during this time, the disciples became very accustomed, very used to relying on Jesus' strength and power. Right? The, the disciples saw Jesus command the wind and the waves, right? And, the, and, and it stopped. The, the disciples saw Jesus heal lame men. They saw the deaf begin to heal. They even saw Jesus touch dead people and dead people came to life. The disciples saw it. And then after that, in John 14, Jesus started preparing his disciples that, hey, I'm going to leave you. And they were like, huh? How are we going to survive without you? How can I live without you? Anyway, right? That's probably what their reaction was. And they were expecting Jesus to return, as he promised. Jesus promised to return, by the way, right? But Jesus was promising something even more, more immediate. Just a few verses before Acts 1, 8, Acts 1 verse 4 to 5 says, And while staying with them, this was Jesus, and while staying with them, Jesus ordered them, the disciples, not to depart from Jerusalem. J Jerusalem was where they all resided, okay? But to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So before Jesus would come again, like physically come again, Jesus promised the coming of someone else, the Holy Spirit. And then now you read Acts 1 verse 8 with that context. Again, guys, a lot of the pastors are going to preach from this. I hope now this will give you a better understanding. Acts 1 verse 8 says, But you will receive power, but you can power up because the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be witnesses of God. Okay, la, you're not in Jerusalem. In Bukit Jalil, Kinrara, Kuala Lumpur, Ipoh, Penang, Cambodia, Thailand, Pakistan. Pakistan, yeah. Huh? What? Yo, I, I went beyond that, bro. Okay? And to the ends of the earth. Why was the, why was the Spirit's empowerment given? The Spirit's empowerment was given so that we can do the work of spreading the gospel throughout the world. How many of you at times feel that evangelism is not for you? Wow! Guys, thanks, Ekang. Thanks. At least, yeah, yeah, you're feeling me. The rest of y'all, we're going evangelism next week, okay? I feel like evangelism is not for me. To be honest, I have... Andrew and I, when we were in AIM, AIM is a short-term Bible school uh, course that our church has, we went to KDU and I remember it was a very scary experience and I think we're going to be having some of these exposures for you guys some, uh, soon. Correct me if I'm wrong, we, we walked around with this paper. This is like a survey form, like name. Uh, what's, what are your thoughts on religion? It's a, basically a survey paper. Lah. We have to walk around in KDU, which is a college in uh, PJ, with a paper and basically go to a fuller we don't know completely and like, hey, do you have 10 minutes of your time? Uh, at least my wife, I can't do that. Like, hey, like, do you have 10 minutes of, uh, uh, can I have 10 minutes of your time? And then there are certain people who will be like, please, uh, who are you? Like, kind of thing. And it's like, it'll break your heart and you'll feel very like, oh, what did I do? Something wrong on my face, right? So you basically got to like, again, pray, sense, you know, who is. Some people will respond like that. Uh, Austin's got a very, very nice face. But, but like, some people like, not very nice face, a bit young, so I'm being recorded. Anyway, but yeah, it's intimidating to approach some of them. But basically, that's what we did. You go with a survey form to random people around and like, we have 10 minutes at a time. And then, you know, Andrew and I did it. And one guy was like, sure. So we sat down with him. 
he filled through the survey form. As he filled through the survey form, you kind of talk to him. This is a complete stranger, guys. I think it was a Nigerian guy. Yeah, Nigerian guy. Now, Nigerians are, 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 most Nigerians are Muslim, but this guy was at least quite open. Nigerian guy. So we talked to, like, while he was feeling, you know, we talked to him. So, so what are you studying in KDU? Small talk, yeah. Just say, how's the weather today? <laughs> Nigeria, very nice. Uh, all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, small talk, yeah. Okay. And then you feel through the survey and we talk to him. Oh, so you are open to the gospel. I mean, I'm just making it out, but we had a conversation with him. And it came to the point of like, so we're from Kel blah, 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 and like, will you be ready for us to just pray with you? To receive you into your life? You guys, yes. Andrew and I were like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? what do we do? <laughs> what do we do? Pastor? There's no pastor around, right? Like, huh? But we led the guy to the Lord. I don't know where he is now. Very really honest, we don't know where he is now. But I trust that he's still in the Lord. Guys, that call, and that, that, that guys, if you haven't gone to AIM, please go to AIM. Please, please, please go to AIM. Because I wouldn't have had that experience. I know some of you guys, I, I'm, I, I'm your youth leader right now. I text some of you, hey, follow on this, follow. I don't know him more. I approach, Andrew and I approach a, a Nigerian guy from a different country that looks really scary with a paper, okay? And like, so because we went through those experiences, now like, you ask me to approach stranger in church, okay lah, you know? So please go to AIM. If you all can, like, like, if you can afford like three months of your life, please go to AIM. But what I'm trying to say is, the Holy Spirit is the one that empowers us to do those things. I'm a very shy person. Ask, ask Vic. I'm a super shy person. Very, very shy. When I first started teaching as a youth, did, <gasps> did I say the right thing? And then you've got Brenda Chin and Alex Lee, if, if you all know this fellas, who are asking me weird, weird questions that I have to say I don't know too. Brenda Chin is... Chelsea Chin's older sister. It's Holy Spirit. Until now, I, re I, I, can, I can totally understand what senior pastor means when he says it's the longest walk is from your seat to here. I still feel it. I feel the most nervous when I need to public speak. But you, but you seem fine, my Not me, la, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit empowers. Holy Spirit leads... You think I prepared these thoughts with my own wisdom and intellect? Yeah, I printed it with my own like, office paper, but I didn't... It's not from me, it's God, Holy Spirit. Okay, I need to close. Now, a bit more practical stuff. The early church needed the power of God. Needed the power of God. And if their culture then was godless, look at our culture today. There's, there seems to be like a commitment to absolutes, like extremes right now, right? Either people are completely not neg negligent to, you know, anything spiritual, or people are too, you know, the other side of the spectrum. Even something as basic as gender, I'm, I purposely brought out this example because we're having a gender, gender identity seminar next week that I hope all of you will make it for. Even something as basic as gender, like, you know, if I was God, like, guys, come on, man. I made it so simple for you guys. I created two gender, male and female. And y'all go and take what I created and go and create 100 more. Like, are y'all ridiculous? I mean, if I was God, that would be my reaction, lah, right? You know there are over 100 genders in the world nowadays? God only created two. And, but that's how messed up it is. That's how godless the culture is today. But friends, friends, this is the world we are commissioned to reach. That's why we're having that seminar. We don't want Christians to, you gay, run away. We, no, that's not how we're supposed to do it. That's the world we are commissioned to reach. And the demonstration of the spiritual power, right, the Holy Spirit's power, is going to be vital to effectively reach our... Now, let me just bring this straight up. How many of y'all were wowed by what Pam Seward shared? I was. But when I did my study, right, I realized that it sh if, if, if we hear a story like that and it surprises us, we are someone 
So I, I, I had to admit, the missions weekend when we heard Pam Sewer minister, my Bugatti keys were probably in my pocket and I hadn't started the car. Because if it surprises us, means I haven't experienced the power of God. We don't need to be Pam Seward. We don't need to be a, a, a super famous evangelist or speaker to be able to start someone and believe that the person can be healed. All of us have that delegated authority. And I'm hoping from today onwards, if you hear someone is sick, if you, yeah, musicians can, can, can come. If, if you hear someone is sick, or if you hear someone needs to be restored, that you will trust in that delegated authority God has given you through the power of the Holy Spirit, be bold enough to reach out that hand, lay it on someone, and believe for that someone to be restored. How many of y'all say amen? amen? I got to admit, I, pastor or not, I was, I always had the desire to uh, lay hands on people and see people baptized in the Holy Spirit. I've never had that experience and I had it at youth camp. And I realized that it wasn't my hand but it was the Holy Spirit's power flowing through me to see people touched by the Holy Spirit. Tiff had a wonderful testimony of seeing five people saved last year. And because she obeyed the Lord in opening up, when God opened up opportunities, it, it, I'm sure it took boldness, it took going out of the way. And she shared the gospel in different ways to different individuals and five individuals came to the saving knowledge of Jesus. So guys, I'm hoping what I share with you today will change our mindsets. These supernatural things, signs and wonders shouldn't catch us by surprise. Oh my gosh! Only, that one only Pam C word lah. All of us are capable of being channels in which the Holy Spirit can minister. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now to Him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly, far above how, what we can think and imagine, according to the power that is at work within us. It's not you. Not you. But the Holy Spirit. In conclusion, you know what the Spirit does, right? And I kept reminding the camp committee when we planned for camp. What the Spirit does, we cannot manufacture. The Spirit doesn't work with an if-then equation. If we do like that, then the Holy Spirit will work like that. It doesn't work that way. That one mathematic boleh. Holy Spirit is beyond mathematics. The Holy Spirit does not, is not confined to an if-then equation. So what the Spirit does is not something we can man manufacture or man manipulate, but only something we can pray and seek for. And you know why the Holy Spirit moved in camp? And that's why I think camps are so powerful because all of you who went to camp set aside money, set aside time, you were away from what you knew was comfortable, and you were in a space where you opened up yourself to God to touch you and and I feel you guys you come back to KL it's very hard to manufacture that environment correct pray seek God pray seek God and it's, like I said just now, it's difficult to pray. Pray with someone. Remind someone. Pray. Seek God. Come for CYF. Come to church. Every time you are, you are in a fellowship of believers, you hear messages being preached, you get, do, do you feel that sense like that? Yup, 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 that was for me. Yeah. That, that, that lifted up my spirit today. 
That's why we come to church. That's why we spend time with believers. Friends, looking the part of a Christian will not change our world. Keeping quiet and sitting still will do nothing. We need to move and act in faith, relying on the power of God working in us through the Holy Spirit. I know I took a lot of time. It's 40 minutes, but thank you for paying attention and being so attentive. The same Spirit that worked in the New Testament, nothing has changed about Him. In fact, what changed is us. We've probably become more godless than then. But because the same Spirit works in us, the same power is available to us. So all of you with your heads bowed, your eyes closed, I'm just going to give you maybe a minute or two to just reflect. I, I know I spoke a lot, like a lot, a lot. Just reflect. And if you all are not taking people, I want you to maybe just type out a sentence or two in your phone or if you're writing, whatever. What is God saying to you today? What is God saying to you? These are precious, precious moments. We don't want to rush it. Some of you, some of you the, the destiny of your lives after this will change based on what you do now. So as the Lord speaks, just think, pen it down. you to stand. We're just going to go back into a time of worship. And after that, I'm just going to open up these altars. Stir it up in my heart, God, a passion for your name. Stir it up in my heart, Lord, a passion for your name. Stir it up in my heart. And if that's your prayer, I just want you to lift your hands high. My desire, Lord. In my heart, Lord. In my heart, a passion for your name. A passion to make you known, Jesus. Stir it up in my heart, Lord. A passion to read your word, Jesus. A passion to pray, Jesus. A passion for your name. A passion to fast, Lord. Stir it up in my heart, Lord. A passion to pray for this generation. that is our prayer God that is not just a song we sang that is our individual prayer I believe all those here at the altar there at the seats that is our prayer Lord Jesus nothing we can do Lord but your spirit to increase that passion yes. increase that love for God Amen. to build that fire to grow and nurture that yes, fire Lord. The fire that can never die, God. Amen. The fire that burns for our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So I pray this prayer over these young people right now. Yes, God. That this year, 2023, will be a year of intentionally seeking you. Yes. A year of intentionally following you. Amen. A year of intentionally helping others follow you. Amen. Amen. A year of 
showing people, the people around here, the people outside here, showing them what it's like to know Jesus. Amen. And a year of declaring and representing Christ to our communities. Amen. Thank you, so we declare that Holy Spirit and you have heard our voices, you have heard our desires and we go today empowered. Not with our own wisdom, not with our own strength, not with our own abilities. But Holy Spirit, You flowing through us. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, the same Spirit that built the church in the New Testament is going to build Calvary Youth in the name of Jesus. So we thank You and we praise You, God. We know You're going to do wonderful things this year and beyond. In the name of Jesus, we all pray and Calvary Youth shouts. Amen. Amen. Calvary Youth shouts. Amen.